Thank you very much for the kind introduction. Also mentioning all these dates tells you, thank you for mentioning these dates and making it clear that I'm turning into a dinosaur by now. So, um, thank you for having me here. It's a great pleasure to talk uh, about my work and my ideas a little bit. A couple of things uh, before I get started I wanted to mention is actually, the title here should actually be Towards a Measurement Architecture. Um, this is an SDIs. Um, and what I want to have, what I want to have here in the end of this talk is actually think a little bit about this and see where you see can, where you can make contributions and what, what you think is important. And also, I, I traveled through so many time zones. We're actually living in the future when you see the date I put in for this uh, slide. Um, sorry about that, but <laughs> that's tomorrow. So let me get started to give you a quick overview. Um, I want to give you a little introduction, my motivation, and to see my view of what is an SDX. Um, talk also a little bit about an SDX prototype. Um, Joe mentioned, hinted about, talked about this a little bit, and I'll tell you what we did on the prototype. Going a little bit into applications, how we can use SDX as SDI infrastructure, and then um, talk a little bit about the measurement uh, architecture in the first place. And, you know, Jerry just asked about the network engineers, and I think measurements are really, really important. We're going to run into a lot of problems when we start doing really doing this stuff with the SDXs and SDIs. And we have to have good tools to figure out what the hell is going on when, when we do these experiments. And I'm actually coming from an area, uh, having done a lot of networks with atmospheric sensors, and I want to bring in some of these things we have learned as some of these experiments uh, we have gone through into our world of networking to make sure that we really do good measurements, that we get good results, scientifically valid, valid results when we do these measurements to show that we're building the right thing here, that we're right, and also figure out where, where the mistakes are we're making. So, just to get started, this is this be nothing new to you. This is how the internet looks today, right? We're talking about, you know, having, having autonomous systems that are uh, autonomous areas that are connected via HPs. Um, we have something like what a gateway protocol that tries to keep them all together and working, and it, most of the time it works pretty well. It's, it's totally out of our control, right? It's how these uh, autonomous systems are connected is something that's, 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 you know, way above us. And there's nothing we can do in this case. Um, it's just all kind of baked in the internet exchange points. And what I think is going to be the future is actually when we have an SDX enabled in the environment, it's actually that we can actually, my, my vision is we can actually slice these things. And so then we can actually have policies in there. We can have policies in there that are not just BGP. We can then run BGP in one slice, but we can also run BGP version 50 in one slice. Or we can run something completely different, right? And that, that's kind of where I think this lies the, the interesting piece of that and lies, lies the future especially in, in, in having this kind of new kind of type of network and parallel network also going on. And so here's just a small in, 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 into the idea or in trying to bring this across where you have two different content providers that then can actually have their kind of policies baked into these slices and then, um, um, you know, deal with their um, uh, traffic for the content provisioning. So that's kind of the basic idea. And so I apologize a little bit for the resolution here of this slide. I couldn't find a higher resolution one. But what is an SDX? And I feel like right now in the community, it's a little bit like, you know, you have probably seen the, 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 the slide of a bunch of scientists touching the elephant. Just so they have their eyes blindfolded, and the guy in the front says, oh, it's a spear. The one who is uh, touching the trunk says it's a snake. The one on the body says it's a wall, the one on the tail says it's a rope, right? And so my version of what's an SDX is, right, it's kind of this is what you see when you talk to different people. It's open floors, it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's for advanced BGP, it's multi-domain SDN, it's only for research, it's an advanced IXP, and so on and so on. So what I want to show you with the slide is we're really in the way of defining There is no one single answer. I think it's kind of all of them somewhat. And maybe two or three years from now, we will know a little bit clearer what it is, right? So we're kind of, um, you know, walking along the path and trying to figure this out. 
two criteria that one for me is actually it is multi-domain SDN, right? It, an SDX, a software-defined exchange, brings different SDN domains together. That's 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 definitely one, um, and it is um, you know it, 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 from my vision kind of point of view, it will turn into an advanced exchange in the future. But it's, it's, it's a little bit more than that, which I'm going to go get to in a, in a moment. So uh, when we look at this, we have, you know, obviously the advantages of software-defined networking in, in, in such SDXs, and that gives us an SDX-enabled internet. So we have, what we have with SDN already, that's not new, you probably know all about that. And then the software-defined exchanges will, in their first version, be something that give you uh, new ways of uh, um, um, to give you, to give you the, the, the advantages or the, the, the concepts of software defined networking in an exchange. Right? And so you, with that you can have um, policies like what was shown by uh, some folks at SICOM this year uh, for an advanced uh, policy based BGP uh, supported by SDXs. And so our vision, uh, one, one important point I want to mention here, our vision about SDXs is, is actually that that it's not only the networking piece, but it's also the compute and storage piece that comes together. So what we see in SDX is not only lots of network support, compute and storage. And I, as I will show you in a second, um, with G, you have that kind of already. But I'll show you the setup we used for the demonstration Joe was talking about is at, at the conference uh, earlier this year, where we have with the Genie racks already compute and storage resources right next to the SDXs. And I think that is a very, very powerful tool because now we can do a lot of things that we weren't able to do before. So how can, um, ben, uh, um, SD, how can the applications benefit from SDXs? First of all, you know, there's, there's traffic characterization. So um, be application-based and domain-based. Right now, everything is only domain-based if we look at it. And then we have reactive flow installation. So we know how this all works with SDN. We have this already in place. And then traffic prioritization, right? So I'll show you in a moment how we can, oops, wrong, wrong button. How we can actually um, have, have severe weather warnings and give them prioritization over, for example, video traffic because that's more important. Um, and then you can think of, when I talked about policies and that you can have your own slice in an SDX, there's third parties. Everyone in the end can kind of bring in their kind of policy, you can think of content and file sharing, right? So, so everything that you're doing with, with what content providers, for example, another, like Netflix, for example, with their over-the-top approaches, where you, where, you do a, where you go a very funky way about content out to the users, you can actually bring it back into the network, and I think that it should be something very attractive to the uh, community. So where can we go with this? There's a lot of things we cannot do these days in the current internet, right? And so there's name-defined networking, there's cyber physical systems, I'll show you a quick example here. Clean slate, right? We can get, get a, of kind of a part of the IP legacy, uh, at least on the research side, if we want to try that out. And then, actually, how do things change if we do in network computation and, uh, and storage? Right? So these are different things which I think an SDXs and SDI are enablers for. So keep that in mind. So, um, here's the prototype implementation of an SDX, and that's what we used for our demo earlier this year. What you actually see um, on, the, on, on your left-hand side, um, the resources in Chicago, uh, you know, had at this point already established an SDX. And right next to that SDX, there's also a Genie rack, and that allowed us to have storage and computation here. Um, then we have three um, domains, three different domains that were not all of them were technically complete S domains, but I2, AL2S, and then the 2A2S, we heard about them already, um, ORNI and ESNet. And then there's also a prototype SDX, also coming out of the Genie project um, at Atlanta, which also has a Genie rig on the other hand, right? So there's computation on that side, there's storage on that side. And so we have the kind of first kind of SDX prototype, multi-domain SDNs in between, SDX is on the side, computation and storage. So it kind of fits the needs I kind of put out on my earlier slides of what I see we need um, to do this advanced networking. And I have uh, a support 
um, applications on top of that. Um, so that's that's kind of the basic um, architecture uh, of this prototype implementation. So Joe hit it already a little bit. Um, I've been spending the last years of my life also looking into how we can improve uh, severe weather observations and warnings. And out of that came something that's called an outcast. And an outcast is slightly different from what a forecast is in a way that this is not like weather forecast for tomorrow or for next week and so on. It's really short term. So think of a severe weather event like a tornado or a severe thunderstorm where you want to give people warning in the next 10, 15 minutes. So you have to gather data. You, you observe your data with um, advanced radars and then you have to ship your data in real time to the computation to get your forecast, your short term forecast out. And you want to do this as short as possible so you can give the users, the public, enough lead time to react on it, seek shelter or whatever. And so we, we think that SDX can support this very well because we can define where we can set the policies of where our data goes, right? We can shoot, for example, a path with the lowest latency if, if possible. We can actually combine this very nicely with the computation and the storage. Right? I'll give you an example of how you could actually very, um, modify that if, if need be. And, um, and then get, uh, uh, meet with that the requirements of the application. And you can prioritize, right? You can, you can say we want to have um, high, we want to have the, the weather data, the graphic, having much higher priority than, for example, with your application. Or just to. So there's, there's, we need high bandwidth connections, but because this is high bandwidth data, uh, we need computer intensive resources because calculating an outcast need, uh, 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 required some resources. And then we also need storage for this, for this data, uh, and then especially for you know, the end users. So with, with that, I want to, um, after giving you the introduction and the application, I want to show you what I think is it's really important when we kind of build kind of the measurement infrastructure for SDXs and SDIs. And that is, first of all, um, scalability, because you know, this is going to be in the core of the network, so we're going to make sure that, that we build something that can scale, scale with, with tons of flows, uh, tons of applications. Um, when we think about measurement, we want to be non-intrusive, non-interfering. We want to have it easy to use so people really accept it and find it a nice addition to the experiment so they can generate data that maybe the community can use, right? Uh, we see this in many cases where people now make traces of wireless networks available and others, the whole community actually benefits from this. Calibration, this is something um, that is really important to me, is where I think our community is sometimes not doing a, re a really good job is, are we actually making sure that what we're measuring is really meaningful and important and how do we check that, right? That is something we have to take care. Um, and then there's something that really is important and different to what when we did monitoring and measurement in, in the in the tradition. <coughs> now we have a control and a data plane. And there can be things on the control plane that can imp in, in influence the performance on the data plane. And if you don't measure both, we can we might not observe 100% uh, what's happening. Legacy, what can we use that's already available in these? And then, you know, what do we need actually? from the SDX to the SDI. Okay? That, that's kind of um, the last piece here. So scalability, I'll just go shortly over them, is actually the, all the things you have to deal with to make this, this, um, this scalable. Sheer numbers of flows. Um, we, we have seen approaches where you just don't have, and in many cases when you think about SDXs, you might be able to do this with a single central controller, but what about if you have distributed SDM controllers, right? How do you measure this? Like, do you set your measure points? You've got to build an architecture so you can deal with this measurement of SDXs, right? If I put something in here and I have to get it coming out of the other side, you have to be able to do it distributed to, do, to measure these different points. Absurd, maybe you have to deal with a uh, way that you can only observe a subset of points. Um, very important question, this is a little bit of a poly policy question when it comes to measurements. I'm talking about slices. Will I, as researcher A, actually to be able to observe a slice from 
first slice B, for example, right? What do we do about policy? What kind of data can we see? Because it might be input just, I observed Joe slice because it might have an impact on mine if isolation is not, for example, 100% thick, right? So kind of how do we deal with these policies? Um, the next point is non-intrusive and non-interfering. How do we actually create tools that do not actually impact our data transfer or our experiment? Right? So we, we got to think about how this will be designed. Um, the nice thing is actually with SDNs is actually that we can, we can, first of all, we have a control plane and then we can have different flows. So what do we want to send our measurement traffic? We're generating through the measurement on a different virtual network, on a different slice uh, than our action traffic because that might impact our measurement, right? So it helps with non -inclusiveness. Um, so uh, that's, that's one thing to think about here. Uh, how can we design that? Um, this framework should be easy to use. Um, and so what I think is important that we did build this measurement tool based on what's already out there. We have been, I've been in Gini working on a measurement project for the last three years. And how can we actually expand and extend these tools? You know, Ivan and, and Max and other people have been working on OML and OMF for a long, long time. This is very robust, why we're not building something on top of it and instead of throwing it away and taking something new. I think it's important that we go deeply into this. We have to uh, build an, an interface on top of that. Uh, and out of our GIMI project, have we created many tools that are um, reusable in this case. Calibration, and that's something that we should be really careful with and I think I feel this is often very forgotten, gets, gets forgotten in our community. Everyone else out in the world does it, right? If you get if you get something from Agilent, a measurement device or whatever, you have actually a little stamp on that that tells you how long this measurement uh, device is, is calibrated before you have to recalibrate it. If you get to take a radar out in the world to measure some atmospheric data, you recalibrate it every day. Do we actually recalibrate our network cards or something like this, right? Well, you don't have to really recalibrate your network card, but we never kind of test it, right? We never kind of go and say, hey, we have a traffic generator or we have some certain traffic injection where we exactly know what goes in the network and then measure and see if this is really coming out. Right? I think that's kind of the thing where we really have to think hard to get this in a little bit more uh, in, in our measurement tools in the future to make sure we have robust and meaningful measurements. Control versus data plane, right? There's, I'm just going to hint at this briefly. There's, there's, we need a little bit more holistic approach in this case because we need to look at also what's happening on the control plane. What happens if you have heavy congestion on your path between the switch and your SDN controller, or if you have dis distributed SDN controllers, right? So you gotta measure all these kind of sites, it gets quite a bit uh, more co uh, complex. What if SDN switches are virtualized, right? I can, I can switch, I can chop up my switches into virtual switches and then, then still run different SDN, how do I call it, zones, domains, uh, on top of each other. How do, how do you deal with these scenarios? I think this, uh, there's a bunch of open questions here that have to be addressed. Um, don't want to go through the whole laundry list of tools, but there's a lot of things that you know the community has created already, and we should think hardly about what we can reuse um, to build some architecture. And then when we go from SDX to SDI, we gotta make sure that we move on from not only looking at the networking side, but also looking at the computing and the storage side. So when we say in-network computing, right? and if something goes wrong with our application, is that because there have not been enough resources? Our VMs, for example, some in the cloud, as, as Casey mentioned before. How can we measure this? How can we observe this? What's going on with the storage? We often see with some solutions, storage is really the bottleneck. And so that's something we, we gotta um, keep in mind to do this. So just let me wrap up with a couple of uh, samples here. This is basically the scenario you before. And for this experiment we did, uh, in the spring, we, we really ran this in one GD slice, right? So, so we can actually do this um, in, in with all the test batch resources we have available today. And we ran this with two different controllers uh, managing the local SDNs in the racks and then also the uh, load balancing controller for shifting load around between the um, different SDN domains we had here um, as the, at the end axis. And so uh, uh, we, we used actually our existing measurement infrastructure for this, um, but only we were able at point in time to measure 
um, like the flows that we're going out over these different SDN domains. What we weren't able to measure is actually that has is something that we have to do in the future is um, traffic that's going on between the switches and the controllers. And it's also a little bit of a policy question, right? Can I like talk to Joe and say, hey, can I actually manage measure that interface where I talk to the controller, for example, right? Do I have the right signal? This is something that has to be um, identified. And here I just want to show you that you can actually do measurements with what we have in place right now. Uh, we're showing some simple statistics of just the Nowcast traffic going over these different domains. And just to show you how interesting that can turn, if you look at the, the green graph here, that is the, uh, I2, Internet 2, AL2S compared to the other two domains. And there's a lot of more volatility on that, right? We haven't gotten, we couldn't, we haven't gotten to the ground of that, uh, to, the, to the basic root of that, but it shows you how important it is to, me measure, um, um, to measure your experiments in a very detailed way because this kind of volatility can cause, to, can cause some problems, uh, basically, in the end, and be able to figure out what's going on. So, as you can see, it's much more stable in the other networks. And then, let me finish showing you an experiment where we actually ran video traffic in alternative to this. And what you see cumulative traffic over time here on this graph, with, on the top graph, the, um, the video traffic and broadcast traffic combined um, by, by load balancing the traffic over the different, um, different SDN domains we had here. And in the bottom graph, you actually see how we get, um, it's just showing the, the broadcast traffic only, how it nicely uh, load balances this traffic over all graphs to, to have the traffic um, going over to maximize the overall throughput uh, with, from the three networks or from the three SDN domains we have here. So just a little example how we you know, can run experiments and do our measurements in this case. Okay, so with that, you know, let, me, let me wrap up here by saying you know, SDX and SDIs is a new approach. There's still a lot of open questions. We haven't really even survived the definition phase of it, so there's a lot of things happening. I think instrumentation uh, measurement is absolutely required because we have to be able to observe what's going on with these new approaches um, when we do experiments, even when we maybe go into production, in full production uh, of this phase. We have to continue then also working on defining the requirements and build on existing tools. Um, we have started this process, but I think there's a lot of work that, that has to be done and it would be interesting if I could, or it would be great if I could have interested some of you in, in about this problem too, and um, you know, I showed you a couple of very preliminary experiments of what we're doing right now with SDXs in our measurement tools. Okay, thank you very much. That's one of the hardest questions, actually. Um, there's, the, there's a very easy answer to this, which, cost, which, is, which is not always feasible, and that is you just put GPS on, on all of your measurement, uh, in, on your test beds. And uh, that's not always possible, obviously. So it's, it's a little bit a trade-off between having 100% time accuracy or losing some of that and having, but keeping that in mind, right? I mean, that, that's, that's what you have to think about when you want to measure and to what accuracy you want to measure. If you really want to have a one-way one delay measurement, then I think right now there's, not, there's no better solution to just putting GPS everywhere and into it and have your time synchronized by that. Now, obviously, there's like with racks that are in buildings, um, not often a feasible solution, so you got to think about other ways 
to do this or just say we cannot go down to the same procedure.